Today we're going to jump into the rest to the regular season. We're going to take a look at week one. We're going to go through everything in a little bit of detail. Again, I do have a series of tutorial videos for Bullbound on the channel. Go check that out uh, if you really want a deeper dive. But we, you know, we'll still go through a lot, a lot more detail than I will in future seasons. Uh, but roll the intro and let's get into it. Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. Bullbound College Football. This is Season 1, Episode 3 of our American Football Manager Journeyman, uh, is what I'm calling it, because uh, we're doing a journeyman similar to the Football Manager Journeyman saves that I've done and other people do. As far as I know, I might be the only one that's ever done one of these uh, for American football. Remember to hit the like button if you like what I'm doing. If you want to see more of it, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. Daily content uploaded on the channel. Primarily Football Manager. Also doing some bull bound as a secondary save. Sim Airport as a secondary save. Those you'll typically have one, maybe two episodes a week. Uh, but uh, Football Manager daily, Monday through Saturday. So the notification bell will keep you up to date. Also, just a reminder, I don't have Patreon. Hitting that like is the only way to support the channel. And if you're not American or if you just don't understand the American football game, professional or college, ask questions below. I'm still a small enough channel that I can take the time to answer and educate you guys as much as I can with the knowledge that I have and I am happy to do that um till like you know till I get like you know eight subscribers and you know just don't have time anymore <laughs> uh, also if you're new to the channel I mentioned it last episode but I like to do it the first couple of videos uh, just for anybody new to the channel I do this part-time I have a full-time job I've done this for four years on YouTube. I have not made one single penny on YouTube. I have over 2,000 videos uploaded on my channel, which means I either I'm not getting out to a lot of people or I suck. I don't know which one it is. I've been told that I don't suck. So hit that like button. That helps more people get eyes on and, uh, you know, let some people know about me if you don't mind. But if you don't know about me, because I do this part-time, I can't be picky and choosy about when I record. So I record in in bulk. I usually record a lot of episodes in one day, usually a week's worth of episodes. So then I can upload one or two episodes a night, you know, to where I'm not taking an entire night away from my family. Uh, I also, as I mentioned last episode, 11 cats, two dogs, two lizards, three kids, one grandkid, and one other kid all living in my house um, does get noisy sometimes um, especially when the wife gets home and is yelling at people to do chores that they didn't do all day long uh, baby might be crying or talking or trying to get attention uh, they typically don't watch TV but a lot of times you'll hear the dogs bark cats you know the cats crying or fighting or you know whatever that's just part of the charm of my channel if you don't like that Definitely not the channel for you because I don't have a private recording room with soundproof walls. And uh, I record in the middle of my living room and you get it live and uncensored for the most part. <laughs> so let's jump into today's episode. Uh, hopefully it is not going to be longer than 30 minutes. I'm not sure how many games I'm going to put, but I expect only one game today and we can kind of get a feel for the format. But one of the things I want to do today, because it's the first game, and it's the first day, first season that we've been on this screen, I kind of want to walk through it, because if you've watched the first two episodes, you know we always start off on this stage details screen, and it gives you a daily or weekly checklist, right? 
And you can see our checklist is pretty long. So let's first off, we don't have any new emails. So if we click here, sure enough, there are no emails. So that's good. If we click on Team Info, there is our schedule. And you can see the weeks that we play, who we play, where we're playing at. At means we're playing away, we're the, road, we're the traveling team. If it does not say at, like Central Michigan, that means we're the home team. They're coming to our stadium and playing at our place in front of our fans. Uh, so we are playing week one at Ball State. We are, of course, the Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns. And as I mentioned, I will try to put up the little picture of the stadium for whatever team we are playing for. And um, that's a big crowd for Louisiana Lafayette. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is a journeyman. At the end of the year, we do have the ability to get fired. Uh, we also have the ability to get new job offers and move up to other schools if we so choose. Uh, the award watch list. I will not check this very often, but you have many awards. Davey O'Brien is for the best quarterback in college football. The Doak Walker is a running back award. Uh, you can look these awards up if you're interested, but basically it's the same way when you go through your player list. So quarterback, running back, receiver, tight end, uh, lineman. Is that lineman? I don't remember. Uh, Outland Trophy, I believe, is defensive lineman. Vince Lombardi is offensive lineman. Dick Buckus is definitely linebacker. Jim Thorpe is secondary. Lou Groza is special uh, best kicker. Ray Guy is uh, best punter. And Mosi Tatupu is special teams, I believe, kickoff, punt returner, etc. But you can go read up. Those are all real players in the history of the game. Those are the real awards named after them. Again, Icy's Real World Mod. I have a video on the channel uh, and below in the in the video description on the link to that video, how to find it, how to install it into your game, and it gives you the real award names, the real bowl game names, as of the time the mod was done. Not current for 2021. Sorry. <laughs> the game is from 2005. Uh, update the team depth chart. You're definitely going to want to do this every week before you play because you'll have injuries, suspensions. Now, suspensions only happen twice a year, but you do have a third period at the end of the season for the bowl game where all your players come back from suspension. So if you've got 10 players that have been suspended all year, all 10 of them can come back and play in the bowl game. But we just did the depth chart last episode. We haven't done anything, so nothing's going to happen there. All right, here's what's interesting. All right, offensive game plan. So we set our offensive game plan, which we're using the West Coast. We do that in the preseason. We can't change that until next offseason. What I can do here, though, is I'm going to suggest and save, and this is the percentage of plays that each player will play. I find that this does a pretty good job. You may want to tweak this a little bit. Sometimes I'll tweak the quarterback. Sometimes I'll tweak the tight end, third down, uh, you know, whatever it may be. Also, you're going to, you know, get to know your players. How well is your kicker's range, his strength? That will determine his range. If he's got a real low strength, he's not going to kick the ball very far. If it's a real high strength, uh, so 47 means my kicker, eh. Um, on some of my online teams, that defaults to a 57 or 58-yard field goal. It's about the longest a player can make. The NFL record is... Oh, God, for decades, it was, since 1970, it was 63 by Tom Dempsey of the New Orleans Saints. That was tied by Jason Elam of the Broncos, I believe, in the 90s or the 2000s. 2000s, I think. I think somebody broke that with a 67-yarder a couple of years ago. I could be wrong on that. I don't... I don't really keep up with the records, 
But so, you know, not many players are going to be trying 60 yard field goals, right? So 47, definitely on the low side. But if the game is suggesting that, that's probably a good thing. Make sure you save to, to save anything in here. And we can also suggest in here. Now, we do have the ability to do some game plans. I am going to import it. Oh, I don't have a store game plan. Really? I have some. I guess I have to go into another save right now. But you can create new game plans. If you have a game plan you've created in another save, you can import it. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to go do that. But not today. Um, but let's go with a... I'm going to go with a pass. And I am going to... Remember, my quarterback did not have the best arm strength. The arm strength is a key component of long throws. And I am going to add that 5% into... Sorry about that. I had to pause it for just a second. That was my doctor's office. I had a doctor's appointment yesterday. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I've mentioned it before, and I'm not hiding anything. Um, I'm diabetic uh, because I eat poorly and overweight. So drinking a soda, not good. Um, but uh, I am on medication. It's under control. But uh, I had blood work done yesterday, and my A1C came back at 5.2, which is great. So that's good. Now I just need to lose about 50 pounds, 50 more pounds. I've lost almost 70 pounds in the last year and a half. Um, got about 50 more pounds that I'd like to get off. But anyway, I had my recording song. All right, well, let's get back into the game. You were probably looking at that going, God, he's stupid. What is he doing? I didn't notice it. I did not. It was my fault. All right, so anyway, we are going to go through here. Is this. Now, this is second and, oh, no, I still want, now on this one, I'm going to want that. This one, 30, 50. This one, we're going to go down to 40. Raise that one to 40. We're going to save those changes. So, I've now gone in and modified this pass to these numbers. And they're all 100%, which it has to be. Hey, uh, so we're good there. All right. Now, we can do the same thing on defense. Again, I usually hit suggest for the playing time. And I usually leave these at default. But you have normal balance of pass and run. If you're playing a team that you do know passes a lot or runs a lot, you can, of course, switch over to those. But I usually don't mess with the defense too much, especially against the computer. Uh, now, you can see here, that's the game plan. This is your strategy. So I always look at defense first. I'll do a suggest here. Of course, we chose the 3-4 defense in the offseason. So that's what we're playing. You are going to have some nickel and dime, which are more pass heavy. Usually play those on third down, second and long fourth down uh, and then uh, these will change out we'll save those I usually just go with this now here's the thing you notice over here it says strategies or playbook so if you want to use the strategies that's this screen if and notice this is checked off to use the strategies if you want to use the playbook, come in here to defensive playbook for defense, and you have to tick the box here, right? Have to, and then you put in your percentages for each individual play, has to total out to 100 for each one of the options, normal, run, and pass, okay? I'm not going to do that, so we're going to go back to defense. Going to keep that. Want to make sure that playbook is no longer ticked off. Now, I do like to do playbook for offense. I have a special playbook that I use. 
can't show it to you because it's the same one I use in my online league, but it's the same thing. Right now we can hit this, it will suggest all these various things. Now this actually works very well. So we started playing online in 2005. I probably didn't start using the playbook until probably five or six years ago. So for almost 10 years, I used this option. This is perfect for you to get used to the game. And let's say like I have a very good split end, okay? So I can target my receiver more than my tight end. If you've got a really good tight end, you can change it to target your tight end more. If you want to run more screen passes, you can target your running back more. So you can dial this in your passing strategy and really pick out individual players or at least positions that you want to go after. The other thing, so our split end, Andrew Owens is our best player. If we go to our depth chart, see Owens is a split end. But what I can do is I can move him to a flanker, right? And then that makes him the number two receiver over here. So he would line up over here at flanker, okay? And then wide receiver three, that's your slot receiver. So just something to think about when you're looking at this. We can look at the offensive playbook, very similar to what we just looked at. You have a list of all the plays in the game, each type of thing, inside, outside runs, short, medium, and long passes. And then you would tick off the little box here to use playbook rather than game plan. Okay, so I will likely use that, but for week one, we don't have to because I want to kind of get a game done. All right. We can also jump in and monitor recruit stats and interest levels. This is pretty worthless during the season to me. Uh, you can look at the polls. Again, we're not going to be ranked in the polls. Pretty worthless. Uh, but then this is where it gets important, Sim Weekly Games. Now, as we move along in the season, as we have statistics for the teams that start to accumulate, you will then have, you will see the offensive player and defensive players change. You will have yardage per game in offense and defense. How many yards they gain a game, how many yards they allow a game. And that could be something to look at first. That's In fact, that's usually the first screen I go to to look at the previous week's score and then to look at the next week matchup before I get into anything else because that could determine whether I want to do more of a running attack. I mean, let, you know, let's say we're, you know, let's say we like to throw the ball, but we've got a decent running back, right? We're going to play a team that is in the top five in the country at defending the pass, but they give up 400 yards a game rushing. That's probably a good indicator. I need to run the ball against those guys. So that's something we'll be able to kind of look at. It will also give you a preview. And when you look at your team budget, remember where we had the college offense, college defense, and advanced scouting? Your advanced scouting comes into play here when you do the preview, and that tell you know that determines how accurate your your player previews are. And again, there's nothing in the first week because there's nothing here. But this will tell you know we're slightly favored offensively. We're evenly matched defensively, evenly matched special teams. So we should win this game, but it should be pretty close. You can see we're just a slight favorite, but you can also see there's five arrows ability, or potentially we're only one. So we're picked to win the game, but you know not by more than a couple of points. So this is where you want to go in and make sure your depth chart is good. So normally I would check the I would check the the previous week's game. We don't have one. I would look at the next week's game that we're getting ready to play, which we're getting ready to play now. I would check the preview and look at that stuff. Then I would go and check my depth ch emails, depth chart, make adjustments for injuries or suspensions, uh, 
dial in my game plan, but you know, I don't really mess with the game plan once the season gets going. Now, if I use the playbook, one thing I will say, I usually pick a hand, you know, a, a list of plays and, you know, a good number of plays. Remember, it's got a total of 100 percent. And I give it a couple of weeks because, remember, we're playing similar opponents or opponents that we should beat. So th this is the time to really kind of get to know your players and see how they handle each play. And then after week two, week three, I'll go back into that playbook and I'll find out which plays aren't working and I'll delete those plays. And then I'll either raise the percentage on the plays that are working or I'll pick some other plays. Just depends, you know. I'll usually pick new plays for about the first half of the season because that gets us just a couple of games into the league, right? And then the second half of the season when we're really making a push, then I dial it in specifically. So I'm going to go to Sim Weekly Games. We've done everything for the week. So we're going to hit Sim Week. Now, you could sim the whole season if you wanted to. Don't recommend it. Let's jump into one other thing before we do that. Let's look at our staff. So, we've got three coaches, right? I'm the head coach. But I didn't even change my name. <laughs> I didn't change my name. Oh, I do want to change this to a... In. Oh, this is where you will allow for conference movement if you want it. Uh, I'm going to leave it off because I'm pretty traditional with this. Uh, prestige change is average. This is how much your yearly prestige can go up or down. You could change it to very high, but not very realistic. Uh, skill rating, 1 to 100. Overall rating. So now instead of 1 to 5, it'll be 1 to 10. Uh, but the skills will still will be one to a hundred like that. All right, so we're gonna save that. Interesting. All right, so oh, I know what we were doing. We were looking at the staff. So remember, we don't play the game out, so we can't actually call the plays. So each one of your coaches is given a lot of ratings. Now some are for development. This is how well they can develop players at each position. So your offensive coach, he will scout and develop your offensive players, quarterback, running back, receivers, offensive line. Your defensive coach will develop your defensive players. And of course, special teams will develop special teams. So you can see neither one of my coaches can really can't develop anybody. Which is, you know, so that means our guy that's a, a 1.0 out of 3.0, he's probably never going to get better than a 1.5, why most of our seniors are a 1.5 ability, right? So no matter how good they are at scouting and everything else, if they can't develop, they're no good. Vice versa, if they can develop great, but they can't scout worth a darn, Maybe they're telling you that, hey, this guy's a five-star player, and in reality, he's only a one-and-a-half-star player. So they can develop him, but he's only a one-and-a-half-star player. So you have to find a balance that works for you. And you have to remember, lower schools, you're not going to get the same quality player in recruiting. So, I, you know, it's probably more important to scout them accurately and see if they if you can get players that are already better than than normal to begin with. Uh, then you have game planning. This is how well they call plays for their side of the ball. So my offensive coach will call the plays and try to motivate the players. So he's pretty good at motivating. Uh, Sideline, you know, touchline shouts, right? Encourage, rate, praise. In football manager uh, but game planning this is how well he will follow your game plan or your playbook he won't follow it a hundred percent 
unless he has a very high game planning. This guy's only average. So I would say 60 to 70% of what I put in there, he's going to do. The other 30%, crapshoot. <laughs> Defensive coordinator, not very good. Below average at motivating, below average at game planning. Um, he can, not very good. So this is a guy that I'm going to want to fire and hire a new one next year for sure. And then I might want to see if I can find somebody that can scout and do this stuff as good, but also develop better, at least oranges, which is about all you're, you're not going to get the best assistants or the best coaches in the game. It's like a football manager. You won't get the best scouts. You won't get the best assistant manager what have you. All right, let's go ahead and play week one. Again, we can't play the game out, so we're just going to sim the week. And it simulates every game that's set up for that week. Now, the good thing is, if you know, the AI won't really make any mistakes, but this is where if, you're, if your depth chart wasn't correct, the game might freeze on you and tell you you've got to fix it before you start. And we can now see we're in week one, and we lost this game 31-13. to 13. We both scored three points in the first half. We led 13-10 to 10 at halftime, and then they outscored us 21-0 to 0 in the second half. Their quarterback led the game in passing with 301 yards, three touchdowns. Their running back led the game with 146 yards. And this is the leader for the whole game from either team. So you can see some of these might have, like right here, NC State, NC State, but ULM had the receiving leader, right? So it doesn't have to be the same right here. You had two North Texas and two Brigham Young. Uh, but we got dominated. Let's check out. Now you can look at the game log, and this actually gives you a play-by-play. -play. So you can read through here. We kicked the ball off to start the game. It went two yards deep in the end zone, and Herman Perez ran it out 13 yards to the 11-yard line because, remember, he started two yards in the end zone. So the first two yards just got him back to the starting line, and then 11 more yards total. Their first play was an incomplete pass and a five-yard pass and a 36-yard cross, uh, and there was a pancake on the play. A pancake is when an offensive lineman actually knocks down the defensive player flat and lands on top of him. Uh, if you've ever watched the blind side, when he pushed the kid over the ba uh, barricade at the end of the field, that's a pancake <laughs> to the extreme. Uh, an 11-yard pass, so anyway, uh, that you can look at the play-by-play -play if you want. I'm not going to go into that much detail. We are going to look at the box score. So you can see uh, they open the scoring with a 42-yard field goal. Then our kicker, Gregory Means, kicked one from 36 yards out to tie the score. They got a 21-yard touchdown pass. Uh, we got a two-yard pass from Faust to Marcus Velasco. Means made the extra point. So a touchdown in the in football gives you six points, an extra point gives you one point, and a field goal gives you three points. A uh, field goal, if you're not sure, uh, is where you kick it through the uprights at the end of the field. Touchdown is where you pass or throw the ball into the end zone, and then you kick the extra point, which is just like a field goal, just it's after a touchdown play. Uh, you can also have a safety, which is two points. That's where the defense tackles the offensive player in their own end zone. The defense gets two points for their team, and the team that gave up the that was sacked or got got the tackle in the end zone has to then kick the ball. So not only does the other team get two points, but they get the ball back. So they could potentially have a nine-point play. You could also go for two points on an extra point, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, we keep moving along. Then we got a thir another 37-yard field goal by Means, putting us up 13-10 at the break. 
Uh, in football, man, foot, in soccer, football, European football, you play halves, 45 minutes. In American football, you play quarters, which are 15 minutes each, 60 minutes all told. The biggest difference is in European football, the clock runs consec continuously, and then they add stoppage time at the end of the game. In American football, the clock only runs when the ball is in play, so there is 60 minutes of actual playing time. So that's the big difference. Because uh, we've certainly seen in European football where you can, you know, run a lot of the clock, hold the ball down by the corner flag, and waste time, things of that nature. Can't really do that in, in American football. Um, Ball State then got a 63-yard pass over half the field uh, from Curtis Snow to Jimmy Gray. The extra point put them up 17-13. Uh, then they got a Snow to David Mitchell pass. And then they got an interception return. So an interception, if you're not familiar, we had the ball. The Cajuns had the ball. Our quarterback threw it. And the defender on the other team, on Ball State's team, He's the one that caught the ball, not our player, and he was able to run it all the way back to the end zone for a touchdown before we could tackle him. And that is a legitimate touchdown and worth, just like a, a touchdown offensively, worth six points. So we end up losing 31-13. They had 23 first downs to our 15. Uh, we were eight of 19 on third down, not bad. They were 10 of 19, so better. They had 456 total yards. We had 296. Uh, we ran 70 plays to their 79. We had 103 yards rushing to their 155. Uh, three yards is not a good average per carry. 4.4, 4.5, kind of what you want to target running the ball. Uh, we were 17 of 34, so right at 50%. Really want to be looking at 60% to be, to be, you know, really doing well. Um, the yards per pass, that, that, that matters, but to me, not as much. Both teams had one interception. Uh, we had nine punts for 38 yards per punt. They averaged 32 yards a punt. <clears throat> we had seven penalties. Whenever you get a penalty, you're pushed backwards. So you have to gain more yards to get a score. Basically, in European football, it would be like if you were down um, inside the penalty box and you committed a foul on the other, on the D, on the, on the, on the center back, right? Instead of giving them a free kick, you would keep the ball, but they might push it all the way back to the midfield circle. If you caused a foul in, the, you know, if your if your defender, your midfielder, had, you know, slid through the back of their 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 midfielder in the in the center circle, then instead of giving them a free kick from right there, they may give them the ball halfway between the center circle and the edge of the penalty box. That's kind of how that works. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense when you put it into European football terms, but it does make sense in American football. <laughs> so, taking a look at the individual statistics, this is where I, you know, I usually look at this. Uh, time of possession is important. <laughs> Typically, you want to look, you know, I look at time of possession. You want the ball more than the other team. If you do, that means you had more opportunity to score. Red zone efficiency. We actually did well, three of three. They were only one of three, but they had the defensive touchdown with the interception. Um, and you can see they got four extra points. And that meant only one of their touchdowns was inside the 20 yard line. Red zone efficiency is how often you converted scoring chances when you were inside the opponent's 20 yard line and in a scoring position. But as you saw this game, long pass, interception, you don't have to be in the red zone to score if the other team's defense plays poorly or you have turnover. So that didn't help us. 
you can see because you remember when we did our playing time, our quarterback was only 80%. Well, he was 13 of 23. Not That's over 50%. Not quite the 60 that we like, but it was pretty good. You know, it was at least good. The other guy, the backup, was 4 of 11. Not very good. Only 30%. So that tells me I probably want to bench him. Now here's, we'll have to look at something for those guys. We'll look at that before we end the video. Uh, Miller had 17 carries for 51 yards, three yards a carry. Faust actually averaged seven yards a carry from the quarterback spot. And Scott, the backup running back, averaged 4.6 yards a carry. So maybe I want Scott to run the ball more than Miller. Or we need to look at Miller and see if he was more... So maybe we want Scott to be running the ball more, or maybe Miller was better at inside rather than outside runs, or vice versa. Maybe he was better at outside. And then in our play calling, we can adjust to be more outside or inside run. So we can now tweak our game plan. Now that we can kind of see how our offensive line blocked, how our players played, things of that nature. Receiving, I, I like to look for drops. This is where the ball should have been caught but wasn't because the receiver screwed up. Um, if you have a player that, you know, he caught five balls out of 13 attempts but only dropped three, so that meant eight out of 13 were catchable. The other seven, five, do math, uh, were bad throws by the quarterback. So you have to kind of look at, the whole story yards after catch um, so when the quarterback throws the ball the player is alive after he catches the ball until he is tackled to the ground so he can catch the ball three yards downfield and then run it for 60 more yards if he if he's good enough like this guy he had five catches for 118 yards he had one catch for 63 yards, but only 15 yards after the catch, which meant that 63-yarder was probably inside the 10, if not in the end zone when he caught it. So you kind of have to look at all these numbers to understand them. Uh, you have key run blocks, pancakes, sacks allowed. So our right guard uh, allowed two sacks. Everybody else was good. Uh, we had one wide receiver that fumbled a ball. That was white and then uh, kicking our kicker was two for two on field goals one for one on extra points so he did his job nine punts two inside the 20 one touchback and kick returns we averaged 25 and 22 yards respectively nothing wrong with that uh, anything over 20 is pretty positive uh, punt returns Fisher only four yard average, not very. And then you can look at the defensive players, player of the game, your attendance, uh, temperature 85 degrees Fahrenheit, and slightly overcast. So that kind of gives you the breakdown of the game. And that's kind of what we're going to look at after each game here is we'll come in, we'll look at the box score, we'll look at the leaders, and then we can kind of come in and look at our team and you can see now if we go to stage details we've got seven new emails well we have an injury report two players so scott our running back suffered a groin injury tore his groin muscle uh, he's able to play but sit him out one more week is what they recommend jason peterson and a kit and a torn tendon in his ankle might want to sit him out one more week so Scott and Peterson. We go in and look at the depth chart. There's Scott. There's Peterson. So they were our starters. So we have to go in now and make our suggested moves. It's still saying to start Scott and Peterson. So we'll put them in. I tell you what, I'm going to move Hickey up. No, I should actually check some stats here. Look at center and I want him to be able to run block first. Now you can see the best run blocker is Hickey. Peterson is second, but Peterson by far 
is the best pass blocker. So even though he has a lower potential, three instead of four, he's actually better in his rating. Now, that rating is assuming our coach's scouting ability. So we kind of have to look at that. Uh, guard, so we definitely want Shaw. And then Jackson is Johnson. Johnson might actually be a little bit better than Jackson. I think that's discipline, even though it's not saying that. Pretty sure that's discipline. So Jackson is less likely to get called for a foul. So probably the best guy to keep there. So we'll keep those. Uh, what I am going to do, I will re I, re I just kind of go through and redo this every week. Right. And then this is where we'll go in next episode. We'll take a look at our new opponent. We'll look at our game plan. We'll think about some changes that we want to do. And there's a new thing you might already see on here. Study hall uh, for players that are on probation or suspended. So we haven't checked all of our emails. We'll do that next episode. We also have in-season recruiting visits. We'll talk about that. That's something new as well. Guys, hit that like button if you like what I'm doing and want to see more. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to get up-to-the-date notifications for daily content released on the channel. And hey, we'll see you next time. Take care.